Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers early Elizabethan England 1558-1588 from the GCSE Edexcel 9-1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you are studying any of the other exam boards or if, just like me, you love history. Hi there guys! Today we're going to be looking at the reasons English sailors and traders began to explore the world and we're going to be having an in-depth look at Francis Drake's circumnavigation of the globe, the reasons he undertook this dangerous voyage and how significant that journey was. Never underestimate the influence of adventure on young people. Drake and others undertook what sounded like exciting adventures and others wanted to follow them. Drake's exploits had been published, completely inaccurately, in a pamphlet and this encouraged others to follow his path. Added to this lust for adventure was the promise of treasure and possible fortunes to be made, a heady combination for a young, poor man. You will remember from my previous videos that opportunities for trade were shrinking with the war with Spain and the Netherlands. This meant that English traders were looking for new opportunities and the new world provided those opportunities. John Hawkins, an English sea captain with a family history of exploration, began the trade of weapons for slaves in West Africa in what would become known as the Trade Triangle. Hawkins began to sail to West Africa and trade iron goods including guns for people whom he then transported to the Americas to be traded for sugar, spices and tobacco which in turn were traded back to England for huge sums of money. Seeing Hawkins success many other traders began to follow his example. None of this would be possible however without the development of new technology. Navigation was becoming easier with the invention of the astrolabe and quadrants. Added to this was the development of better and then standardized maps. For example the Mercator map created in 1569 was was the first to really standardise north at the top and south at the bottom. This made maps much easier to read and by combining them with the navigational tools it was now becoming quicker and safer to travel the vast Atlantic Ocean. Another new technology that made it easier to cross the Atlantic were innovations in ship design. Ships now had bigger sails that meant they could travel much faster and the boats were built to be much more stable in the water meaning they could take more supplies with them. Added to this was the development of guns and their installation on ships. This meant that ships were more able to protect themselves from pirates. Finally, Elizabeth saw the opportunities that trade and exploration would give to England, not to mention the money that would roll in, so she and other rich people financed expeditions and journeys. Although there was a risk that the ship would be lost at sea and the investment would be lost, the financial rewards of the journey were certainly worth the risk. Which brings us nicely onto Drake and his circumnavigation of the globe. Drake set off in 1577 and became only the second person and the first Englishman to achieve this feat. In fact, Drake hadn't actually intended to sail around the world. In true Drake fashion, he was actually aiming to raid the Spanish colonies and ships to steal their goods. Another reason might be revenge. While at San Juan de Alua in modern day Mexico in 1568, Drake was caught up in a battle with the Spanish that caused the deaths of nearly his entire crew. Drake was angered by this and sought to punish the Spanish. Don't forget also that Drake was nearly always motivated by money. Even during the Spanish Armada, Drake took opportunities to raid and plunder Spanish ships. This time, with the financial backing of the Queen and many other financiers, Drake saw the opportunity to trade, loot and plunder, all paid for by the Queen. So, on the 13th of December 1577, Drake set off off with five ships to cross the Atlantic and sail to the Pacific coast of the Americas. However, a series of storms caused him to abandon the other four ships and the Golden Hind, Drake's main ship, was the only one to make it to the Pacific. If you're ever on the South Bank in London, I highly recommend you go and have a look at the Golden Hind. Its size will amaze you. So once on the Pacific coast, Drake began raiding Spanish settlements. He travelled up the west coast looking for a route back to the Atlantic, but finding none, he turned back and prepared to cross the Pacific. In July 1579, the ship set off across the Pacific and visited several islands before going round the Cape of Good Hope and making his way back to England. He returned with huge amounts of treasure and valuable navigational information. Elizabeth knighted him the following year. So why does Drake's long way home story matter and how significant is it? Drake's journey had taken him up the west coast as far as Washington and Seattle. Drake had claimed the land for England, naming it Nova Albion. This meant that England now had claimed a huge amount of territory in the Americas, which really made Philip II of Spain mad. Spain had been awarded North America as their own by the Pope, and Elizabeth's claim angered him. 
added to that, Elizabeth then knighted Drake in 1581, which sent a clear message to Philip that Elizabeth approved of Drake's actions, including his raids. This worsened relations with Spain even further. The journey also increased England's reputation as a seafaring nation. As a result, Elizabeth's power overseas increased. She invested in the navy and England began to use sea battles as its main form of defence. The new conquest of Nova Albion meant that trading opportunities increased and Drake's discoveries of new routes to China and the East made trading with existing countries easier. In conclusion, Drake's circumnavigation of the globe increased trade opportunities, bringing new wealth, it increased England's standing in the world, and it really annoyed the Spanish, leading to increasing conflict with England's old foe. Okay, that's everything for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please leave me a comment. I always reply to you as quickly as I can. Don't forget, if you like my content, I'd really appreciate if you'd buy me a coffee to keep me going. The link is in the description. That's everything for today, and I will see you next time. Thank you.